Hey Aptera fans, I'm Nathan Engler, lead of the Chassis and Suspension Zone. Today we'll be showcasing some of our engineering presentation, which will go over technical information that we share when presenting to investors. We'll be reviewing chassis, suspension, and some of our crash simulations. Enjoy! So Nathan uh, Engler is heading up our chassis and suspension team. This team uh, is responsible for uh, developing uh, uh, the chassis and obviously our suspension system and also uh, going to morph into this new role of uh, leading our validation, homologation and testing mm -hmm. team in the, in the next few months. It's a really interesting point, you know, maybe a, a different company or a larger company would have a team, a chassis team that's constantly creating new chassis for new vehicles, but we're laser focused on this vehicle right now. So uh, he's able to take his team because they have done this kind of validation work in the past and transform them into the validation and testing team. This is a good rendering of the, the, the current status of the, the structural battery frame. Um, I think one of the big things that happened uh, when we started talking with CPC and ETP, as they said, create a load path from the front suspension to the yeah. rear and everything gets a lot easier. Yes, and uh, we will see that in the next few slides, but um, uh, this uh, architecture also allows us again to go back to the, 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 the famous 12 minutes uh, cycle time. Uh, um, we can build this uh, uh, frame with the suspension components uh, on a sub-assembly line and then marry it with the, with the bank at a later point in the assembly line. Um, this is the, the, the front end of the vehicle, again, very modular. It's an unequal uh, A-arm uh, setup. Uh, we brought the uh, shocks and suspension components to the center of the vehicle, um, centralizing the, the center of gravity uh, into the nose of the, the vehicle. And again, um, as we said, it's a modular setup. Mm -hmm. So um, I think Sandy Monroe is in love with the idea of creating uh, sub-assembly lines where you can put components together. This whole front end can be put together in one, one station and then installed into the, into the frame and then into the vehicle uh, at a later time. And we can uh, allow us to, to, to play with the location of the, the assembly lines. Right, when, when this uh, sub-assembly is presented to the line, uh, the line doesn't care if it's if it's made in, you know, wherever whatever state or whatever country yep. even. Uh, so that gives us the flexibility to make these wherever it makes sense. Yep. Uh, but then it's just a simple attachment to the vehicle. And that fits really well into Pablo's uh, plan of world domination. Uh, he <laughs> he really wants to build up terras in uh, every corner of the world, and uh, this type of approach uh, allows us to do that. Uh, it also reduces the costs and the risks, and later on quality problems. Uh, this is um, um, the the rear suspension um, uh, architecture. All the other three wheelers uh, out there have single sided swing arms. The problem is that as that swing arm moves in the rear, the tire actually gets closer and further away from the front suspension as you accelerate and decelerate and it it, it, it gives you some some interesting <laughs> odd um, suspension characteristics that you kind of feel when you're driving but this four link uh, suspension lets the the rear wheel float very predictably up and down evenly with the front suspension so you don't feel it when you're stopping or accelerating right. it feels just like any other kind of four wheel vehicle you drive right. Yeah, the single-sided swing arm or a long swing arm works really well for a motorcycle that has a different geometry, different uh, CG than we do. Uh, this setup is uh, ideal for our architecture. Uh, and, and patented. <laughs> patented, yes. Um, as we said earlier, and we will uh, show you in a little bit, uh, actually next slide, um, we have uh, done a lot of uh, computer uh, analysis on the, on the structure uh, to increase the, the, the level of safety and also to predict how the vehicle is going to behave uh, once we are in production. And that this type of analysis allows us to not only to make it safer, but also speed up the development process. Switching to the, the, the structural battery frame idea architecture um, allows us to drive the, the, the forces, the energy in an impact, like a frontal impact or a side impact, uh, corner impact uh, underneath the drivers and the passenger instead of into the into the actual structure. Not only makes it safer, it also makes it uh, easier to repair, uh, easier to service uh, later on in, um, in the field. Oh. And even though the, uh, you get increased you know, vehicle uh, torsional rigidity from the structural battery pack, it still allows impact forces to go past the battery pack. 
Important to note that yeah. the uh, the heaviest mass item of the vehicle is the battery, right? So yes. uh, try to put all the impact loads into the highest mass item, and that's exactly what this does, so I, I love it. And the other thing is um, um, these obviously modern tools that allow us to analyze it. We, we know how aluminum works, right. so it's it's very makes it very, very predictable and reduces the risk um, of um, tooling something up. So we can eliminate some intermediate steps in the development of this whole entire project because we can predict how these components are going to behave. That's a really good point. This SMC material from CPC along with the aluminum, both which are well understood in their behavior, they can be modeled perfectly so we don't have to do destructive testing. We can have high high degree of confidence of the simulation versus real world testing. And a lot of things that we do in digital, then um, uh, we also test in an empirical manner, so out in the field, and and again right going back onto Nathan's team and chassis and suspension, uh, this is this is what they do, and they will be continuing doing, uh, taking the digital data and predictions, and 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 make sure that the real world uh, behaves exactly the the same way as in the computer. Yeah, the previous frame analysis was really finite element analysis, how that material changes uh, on impact and under stress. Uh, but we also have simulations on how the vehicle moves and what the kinematics uh, are of the vehicle. Um, and that helps us with analyzing things like how will the vehicle react in curb strikes and how will the vehicle react, you know, um, on pothole tests and, you know, swaying back and forth and things like that. So we actually take, this is uh, beta, uh, instrument it up, put a lot of uh, computers and uh, sensors on it, uh, and then go out and test how the vehicle actually performs in the world so we can correlate that data to what happened in the simulation. And if you get really good correlation, then when you make a change in the future, you know that that change is going to work in a predictable manner. Yeah, and the curb strikes are pretty violent. I mean, it busted <laughs> yeah. uh, all three tires, I think. Uh, it didn't just deflate them, it busted them. But it allowed us to collect the data uh, to then put into the Adams model so that we have a very high degree of concordance between real life and the Adams model. So like you said, we can make a small change in software and have a high degree of confidence that it's going to behave that way in the real world. And this chart shows the red line is the simulation, uh, and the blue lines are when we actually went out and got to real world data. So we had 95% correlation, which is just amazing, and shows you how far the simulation tools uh, tools have come. Uh, this is our uh, suspension test jig. Our engineers um, were considering what uh, wires to use to go to the in-wheel motor out on the wheel and what cooling tubes to use and how they would stand up over time and the only way to really understand it is to test it uh, so this guy's been running for a couple months and already has uh, about 200,000 plus miles of durability on it but it goes up and down and it turns the wheel and it shows you how those cables uh, and hoses are going to rub over time and it was it was really helpful because a lot of our assumptions about how to uh, fix the cables and hoses or not to, you know, how they would be captured or allowed to slide. Uh, some of those concepts were jettisoned and some of those were reaffirmed. And so we were able to learn that early on with this and have a high degree of confidence so we can get, you know, many, many miles uh, durability uh, out of those systems. This is a good example of some of the areas that um, there's no historical data for it. So there's nobody out there doing the same thing so right. we couldn't just go back and say hey what did some other OEM do in this situation this is our own unique setup uh, mm -hmm. and and we are learning as we are doing it to view the unedited presentation please join our accelerator program at invest.aptera.us